Hi, folks. We're Ed and Geraldine uh, Burbam. We have a little homestead in Montrose, Pennsylvania, for the last 30 years. And we're going to present to you the world of the old time fiddler, uh, folk melodies from the various countries that the settlers uh, brought with them when they came to America. And it's the music that lives in the hearts of the people. And when you hear it, you know it. That's what the old blind fiddler told us, right, Ed? Yes, yes ma'am. He was a world champion fiddler. His name was Jehiel Kirchhoff, and he lived uh, in the, the Northeast region, played beautiful melodies from the early settlers, learned from his grandpa and his dad. And he said it was the music that helped build America into a great country. So um, our last name is Birbaum, B-E-R-B-A-U-M. It's an old German name, I guess, right, Ed? I think. <laughs> and and uh, Jehiel was Jehiel Kirchhoff, and he was also German. So uh, even though we're German in a heritage, our music really covers many nationalities, from uh, America being a melting pot. So we hope that uh, you all enjoy the music. Yeah. The names are deceiving, because my mother was mostly English. And uh, a little French, and a little, you know how Americans can be, sort of hybrids, you know. <laughs> but uh, so the names really don't tell the whole story. Uh, we'd like to start with uh, two very popular old time fiddle tunes. They might be called dance tunes. One is called Pretty Red Wing, and without stopping, I'm going to go right into one called The Golden Slippers. If that's all right with you, Geraldine. That's okay. And I will say that uh, Carrie Mills wrote Pretty Red Wing, and he lived with the Indians. You really capture the spirit of it. <laughs> Golden Slippers. That's uh, going on a few hundred years old, that tune. Yes, it is. It originated in the south, but it sure did travel fast up north. <laughs> this is a uh, old-fashioned quadrille. Um, has six beats to a measure. Sort of a doodly, 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 doodly. Nice for dancing in the old days, and I'm sure people in a neighborhood right here around Plimpton may have well danced to this particular melody. We hear it called the Standard Quadrille, and uh, just a real friendly tune, and it goes like this. <laughs> 
Isn't that a nice one? That is just a lovely, typical old-timey fiddle tune. Well, they say that the quadrilles were the influence for couples to a dance, and that was the beginning of the concept of a square dance. But they got faster. Way back. <laughs> yeah. What's one of your favorites, Geraldine? Well, uh, let's see. We'll speed up uh, the tempo a little bit because uh, the old days, those Fields are being plowed and still are, right? How about uh, <laughs> thinking of the old mules that helped that out, right? Lop eared mule. Good, that's a good one. Lop eared mule. A lot of these titles really reflect what was happening. <laughs> Just see, I'm trying to get through that field, flopping <laughs> those ears. Long ears. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Now, of course, at a square dance, they didn't square dance all night. They had to have a shotish. They had to perhaps have a polka, a nice waltz, and uh, maybe a variety of other things. Um, this, the title we heard for this is just the country waltz. <laughs> Thank you. 
Isn't that pretty? Just a regular country walk, such a nice tune. Now for the uh, cemetery pictures that are in there, we thought we'd do Sweet Hour of Prayer. This is a uh, just an old typical church song that might be sung at a cemetery. If there's photographs of that, this may go well. And this is called Sweet Hour of Prayer. It goes like this. <laughs> I bet almost everyone in the community has sung that song before. Geraldine's pick. My pick, I'll pick up the tempo with Durang's one pipe, if you can do it. <laughs> now this is what Jehiel, our old buddy fiddle player that lived without electricity and was happy to do so, he called this one of those old time fiddle tunes that would separate the men from the boys, if you know what I mean. So this is uh, the best I can do on an old favorite called Durang's Hornpipe. Put on your dancing shoes for this one. melody that was uh, during the Civil War, the way I was told, uh, was played by both sides, the blues and the grays. There were fiddlers on both sides. And there was a melody called Angeline the Baker that was popular uh, north and south. And uh, the way I heard the story was when the sun went down, the rifles went down and the, uh, uh, at, the, at a river where the blues were on one side and the grays were on the other, uh, when the sun did go down, the fiddlers would pick up their fiddlers and, and one on the north side would play this and one on the other side would, would play that and uh, there'd be applause from both sides. Unfortunately, when the sun came up, the fiddles were in the cases and the weapons came up. But this was a tune shared by both sides called Angelina Baker and it goes like this. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, this is an old-fashioned polka, named after a lady named Jenny Lynn. And it's called, you guessed it, the Jenny Lynn Polka. <laughs> Jenny Lynn Polka. I'd like to do one more if we could. You want to dance? Yeah, this is a lighthearted tune. And I would say uh, people in the community that are the elderliest and perhaps the youngest will recognize this melody that's been around forever uh, called Polly Wally Doodle. And it goes like this. Good dance tune now. Keep your dancing shoes on. Making biscuits, working with maple syrup, and meanwhile, in their minds were these beautiful melodies, bringing joy, contentment, liveliness to their lives with no electricity. Pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And the spirit dances went on at night, clearing out all the rugs, they said. Even the furniture and some of the stoves went outside. They would so carry them out on the porch. <laughs> so they could have room for all the neighbors to come and dance. Yes. Yeah. The Westphalia Waltz. Beautiful, old time waltz. <laughs> You got the 
right, the right one. I'm gonna do a show kid starts in. Okay. Here's a tune made up by uh, acquaintances of ours, uh, Jay Unger and Molly Mason. Uh, did a beautiful job on this. They called it the Ashokan Farewell. <laughs> I just wanted to have our audience get to know you a little bit better. Uh, again, let us know who you are, where you're from, and uh, your background in music. Ed and Geraldine Burbaum. Uh, for 30 years, we've owned a little farmhouse that was built somewhere prior to 1858 in the hills of the Endless Mountains uh, near the county seat of Montrose, Pennsylvania, which several hundred years ago was part of Connecticut, part of New England. Um, we moved there in 1976, sort of the bicentennial celebration year. And before long, we were introduced to a blind, uh, old-time fiddler who lived in the same county, Susquehanna County, Pennsylvania, uh, without electricity and with walking water. Now, some of the elders may remember the bucket uh, in the kitchen and the well out front, and you had to walk to get your water. Not terribly inconvenient, but uh, not running water. And, uh, well, let's see now. Also, before we met Jehiel Kirkhoff, that world champion fiddler that taught us this music, we, Eddie was a banker and, uh, in New Jersey, and I was a school teacher in New Jersey. So we, we left our professions and decided to live a, simp a little bit simpler life. We wanted to make music our livelihood, and that's why it meant so much to us to meet such a wonderful person. We put our TVs in the attic for seven years when we met this person, Jahal Kirkhoff, and, and really had an awful good time visiting and practicing the music. Uh, so it, it, was, it really changed our lives completely. Uh, in a direction of music, yes, but in a much more happier, fuller direction, because now uh, we play at events like the Marshfield Fair, in Massachusetts, and it's just delightful to play for people that come together to have fun, kids that participate and play music with us, put yeah. them instruments out, and we become kids again, too. And you know what's really nice about that is uh, whether you call it old-time music or don't call it anything at all, the way people respond to the music, little children, three-year-old little Susie, she'll just light right up with some of these melodies whether they're shot ashes or polkas or hoedowns or reels or jigs, they seem to have a staying power, even though they could be seven, eight hundred thousand years old, that still, as Geraldine said earlier, uh, apparently it's the music that lives in the hearts of the people. And when they hear it, they know it. And they show body language that lets you know, uh, the player know, that uh, the people are responding uh, with joy, which is a, a wonderful thing. We, we met someone years ago who said, if you play 
uplifting music, you yourself will be lifted up. And we find this is true for ourselves and our audiences and people who listen. Uh, and if you are listening to music that is disorienting or you know negative, you, you might begin to have some problems. Yes. It's, it's true. It is, this is what they found with some research and mm -hmm. music therapy people and all that. And a little insight. Now, I often get asked, what's the difference between a violin, which I think this was purchased as a violin, and a fiddle? In a nutshell, I think it's job description. A violinist um, learns to read music, learns certain designated classical pieces, hopefully plays them very well. Generally, when they perform, as a soloist, they would be in front of an audience of hundreds, if not more, people, often. Uh, kind of makes a guy like me a little nervous. But, and the focus is on them, because the audience has nothing to do but watch the soloist. It's a little more pressure, I would say, than a fiddler. Now, a fiddler, job description would be different. Job description would be play for dances. You should, with your rhythm and your bow, cause people to feel like dancing. And as Geraldine said, if you feel like dancing, that's a joyous thing. Generally, your mood gets better. Generally, if we're playing for an audience, it could be in somebody's home. It could be at a Grange Hall. It could be at a church hall or a fire hall. Or it could be at a county fair like the Marshfield Fair. And your job is to make people dance. Now, the focus is not necessarily on the fiddler, which makes the pressure much less. People are more concerned about how they're dancing. Do they wear the right shoes? Who's my partner? What time is the break? I'm getting thirsty. I'm all wore out from dancing. So there's all these other issues that take the pressure off the musician, and you become, rather than a soloist, which in a sense you still are, but you become a servant to the community to provide joyous music to make people feel better and get some exercise by dancing. <laughs> yeah, the old square dances, they said they went eight miles. They put all the ottomans on them. Our area. Yeah. <laughs> On the old ways, uh, the music uh, really was a wonderful thing uh, back then and still is. It's being passed on from one generation to another, and the young people are really picking up their fiddles too today. We're just happy about that. We learned also, along with the old music, how to keep bees and grow a garden, and have goats, and a little old homestead on two and a half acres. And, uh, on a dirt road where we have a little pond that we swim in and can go fishing if we want. Mm -hmm. It's really very pretty. So we we no longer have the goats. We gave them to the 4-Hers. Uh, but we, for 15 years, we did this after we left New Jersey in our professions. And, mm -hmm. and uh, now we even have a motor home. Motor home, 26 feet, takes us to Florida and back. and in between places along the East Coast to play music, so. North Carolina, Georgia, <laughs> yes, and other, other places. What attracts you to Marshfield? Why Marshfield Fair? Uh, Marshfield Fair, it's interesting. I was, I was going to comment on the uh, old-time music in some neighborhoods was totally inaccessible until the Internet. With the Internet, you have jahile.com. happens to be the fiddler we learned from. Uh, there's links on many sites. You can do a Google or other searches for old-time fiddle. And there's, uh, it opens up the world to anybody, whether they uh, an old-time musician lives in your neighborhood or not. It opens you up to the ability to learn and appreciate the music from the old days. And you can specialize in Irish old-time or English old-time or whatever you want. Um, <clears throat> what got me to the Marshfield Fair? Um, <clears throat> I bought a, an Apple iBook, uh, capable of email. And I had a couple of weeks off, one summer, and uh, my very first email to a county fair saying that I had time off and I was an old-time fiddler and I would enjoy playing. In fact, I think I worded it, I'm looking for a long-term relationship with a nice county fair. And Mr. Chandler, secretary and manager of the Marshfield Fair, also secretary of the Massachusetts Fair Association, um, liked that, called me up, uh, it's a 10-day event, we negotiated. I got in the motor home, and next thing you know, I was at the Marshfield Fair playing fiddle, just like a uh, old-time fiddler. In fact, for the first three years, it was without Geraldine uh, on guitar. This year, we're both here, so I think it's it'll be more enjoyable, more diversified, and uh, and I'm real thankful for Mr. Chandler's 
insight uh, to that because I think it's one of the finest fairs in the country. Well, I, I think uh, also what's unique, every fair has a personality. And um, when Eddie came home, you were telling me how wonderful all the crafts were and the dedication of the volunteers and the people who work at the fair. And, and the directors, yeah. The directors and the people that really are they're, they're friendly. We were just talking about this morning. It just seems like a down-home friendly fair. And I guess that's why you were so attracted, and I am coming too because that's the kind of music we play. And, and it, makes, go ahead. it makes me think that this is the America. When, you, when you're in a, in a situation like the Marshfield Fair uh, or a nice county fair in your own community, it's, um, it's a group of people celebrating, and this goes back thousands of years, celebrating the harvest, celebrating the year-long effort to make a beautiful quilt or an afghan or, or uh, grow the prize vegetable or have the prize goat or sheep or cow or oxen because they still have an ox pole at the Marshfield, uh, Marshfield Fair. Um, it's just a wonderful celebration, and it, to me it represents the, you might say rural, but to me it represents the real America as it was in 95% of the land that is called America. And still, and still is. And it still mm -hmm. is, because really people still want and value those aspects of, of our lives. And I wanted to say the happy circumstance that we've met and we're doing this relationship with this video for uh, uh, Plimpton, and uh, I just can't can't say how much I appreciate all the effort that you put into making this a, a success with uh, uh, by providing the uh, musical accompaniment for the uh, for the video. Thank, Thank you so much. Our pleasure. It's been fun. Thank you. It's been a lovely thrill for me to have you in in, in my studio. Thank you.